Hey folks, and welcome to this review slash tutorial video for Logo Package Swatch. I'm excited to show this new extension today because it's going to save you even more time. Now, I've already done uh, review videos on other Logo Package products, Logo Package Express being the main one which saves you a ton of time when you're exporting your logo files. Well, Logo Package Swatch is going to save you time when it comes to collecting and getting into your logo guidelines documents the color references for your color swatches. So the first thing to say is that this is only for Adobe Illustrator. It works on Mac and PC so you don't have to worry about that but it is an Adobe Illustrator only extension uh, just like Logo Package Express. Uh, it's very easy to install, so I will leave a link down in the description uh, to uh, go and buy the extension. There is a 20% discount for the launch week, which is 30th of October to the 5th of November 2023, and you will get 20% off, so check the link in the description. I will also leave links there for the other local logo package products. Um, once you've downloaded that, you will get a folder and there will be an installation file in there. It's as easy as double clicking that file and it will install. Just make sure that you don't have Adobe Illustrator running. Make sure that's closed. Um, and then when you open up Illustrator, and uh, I've got Illustrator open up here now in front of me, you can see I've got a set of uh, logo guidelines open and I want to use Logo Package Swatch. So what you'll do is you'll go up to Window and you'll go to Extensions and you will see Logo Package Swatch is now available to you. Simply click on that and you will get this window. So let's have a quick look uh, through the window and what the things that we can do at the moment um, before we set up any uh, new project. So you see here project name, so just you can just click in there and type in the project name that you want. We've got project actions up here. If we click on that, we can see we've got open project. So when you uh, create a new project in Logo Package Swatch, it will save that. So you can go back to it later on. So if you open up um, Illustrator and you have a new document, you can open up uh, Logo Package Swatch and you can bring up the color swatches from a previous project. Maybe you want to use them in a, you know, you're creating a brochure or something. You want to make sure that you're using the same uh, swatches, the same uh, brand swatches. You just open up this, this swatch um, project and you can import all of the color values uh, from those swatches. Um, you can create new project and you can also delete projects. Um, We've got a little cog icon here and we'll get to that in a second. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new project. So I'm just going to call this test for now. And then what you do is you will basically go to your color swatches. So if we go and zoom in here to the swatches I have for this project. So you can see here I actually have white listed um, here in this one. I, I do like to do that in my little guidelines if, if I feel that you know white is going to be used uh, or should be used um, as an option in the palette um, when I'm creating the logo and the, and the wider branding. But you may not have that here. Um, and that actually brings up something that I can talk about um, along with, you know, you can see here we've got a really light um, gray color on the end. So one of the things that I want to bring up um, that you need to be aware of is that when you are uh, getting the color values for your project, lighter colors may not um, create Pantone references. You may get a warning that says out of gamut, which means that it's just it's not able to give you a Pantone color reference and we'll see what happens uh, when we convert these uh, colors here but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of um, this white and we'll just work with the colors that we have here and what you do to create the um, to add them to logo package swatch is you just select them all and then just click add selected colors in the uh, interface and you'll see now that it's added these colors uh, onto um, 
logo package swatch. And you'll notice that it's given each color a name. And you know, you can have lots and lots of colors and it's really just here to identify each separate color. Uh, you can go in and it's as easy as clicking in here and changing the name to what you want it to be. You just click, you know, and change it all. Uh, if you have lots and lots of colors and some of those colors are very close to one another, you may find that it gives you the same name for two colors. But again, as I say, you can just go in and change that. Uh, now that we have the colors in here, what you can do is if you click on the little arrows, it will open up the window here and it's given, you know, it's given the light gray wild sand as a name. And we've got the hexadecimal, we've got RGB, we've got uh, HSB, we've got HSL, CMYK, lab, Pantone coated or PMS coated and Pantone uncoated. And you can see here, just as I thought, we've got an out of gamut. So it can't automatically give me Pantone colors for that light of a color. If we close this and if I mean, you can open them all up, all the colors up at the same time, you can see here that is given the, the black color Pantone 419 coated, 4147 uncoated. Um, the the slightly darker grey has got um, Pantone colours, the uh, blue has Pantone colours, the light pink has Pantone colours and the magenta has Pantone colours. So what you would need to do is you would actually need to, if you wanted to get Pantone colours for this, you would need to choose your own colour and you could do that online, you could go to, you know, look at Pantone colours online or if you've got a Pantone book, which I highly recommend you do have, um, and I recommend the Pantone Bridge books, is you could look at your Pantone Bridge book and you can basically choose, you know, what you want the the, the really light grey to be. And if I'm looking at this, then I'm probably going to choose something like Pantone uh, 427. And now that I've got Pantone 427, I can just go in here type in Pantone, oops, Pan, oh, Pantone 427 um, coated and I'll probably just, just for now, for this video, just drop that in there. So I now have Pantone references for the light grail that's calling it white sand at the moment. You know, so you can kind of close all those again. Now, if, like me, you don't really add all of these colors into your logo guidelines. You know, some people will add in uh, RAL colors as well, which can be useful for things like vinyl. You know, if your client's getting some signs done, uh, you can add in RAL references. That You won't get that in uh, logo package swatch. These are all of the color um, values that you can get. But if you don't want all of these color values, what you can do is you can click on the little cog icon and you'll get into uh, an option for the color spaces and you can just switch off all of the ones that you don't want. So if I switch off HSL, HSB and lab um, and leave all of the other ones here and then you can also go down and choose the, the format so you can have it with the, the letter then in equals and then the color value number or you can have you know RGB or CMYK then the number separated by a comma or you can have the the color format, you know, RGB, CMYK, and then the number inside brackets. I prefer it with the equal signs. Um, uh, so I'm just going to leave that there. And then if I click on this arrow to go back, you'll see now that I only have the options that I have chosen. Now, what you can do here is you can manually go to color actions, and copy all colors. So they're now all copied. And if I go to copy and paste, you can see here that it's copied all of the values and I can copy them straight into my board. I've not, not done that very well because it's um, going over the line. But you can see here that it's now copied in you can see my Pantone 427s that I added in manually. And then we've got um, all of the other um, 
colors in here there's a character just uh, needing deleted there now previously what i would have to do is if i wanted to get those colors i would have to have my um you know i'd have my color palette open and um, i would click on the color and i'd go okay that's two three oh zero one two six and then i would you know type that in and as I'm typing it in obviously I'm typing it in black so as I'm typing it in the color goes away again so I'm clicking back on it going back to you know the color trying to find it so you know I've got my RGB so you know so you got your RGB so you switch to there you get your hexadecimal you, you copy paste that in then you go to CMYK you take those numbers and you start typing those in and then you know you've got your HSB you do the same you know all the way through and then your Pantone colors, you know, there's no Pantone colors uh, in Adobe Illustrator anymore or Adobe products. Adobe have removed all the Pantone color books, so you can't use any Pantone color book swatches anymore uh, from inside Adobe Illustrator. Uh, your only other options are to buy and install the Pantone Connect uh, extension which will give you access to Pantone colors and you can kind of look through there and get Pantone colors. Or as I've already mentioned, you know, you could get a physical book um, and you will be able to kind of go through and choose the Pantone colors that you want this way. But with Logo Package Swatch, Logo Package Swatch has access to the latest Pantone color books, the V4 uh, collection, and it will give you Pantone references based on the, the color swatches that you have in your document. Um, I will probably, just being me, I will probably look at the the Pantone uh, references that I'm given by Logo Package Swatch and I will just um, look them up in my book just to see if it's, you know, what I want because uh, sometimes I will make some slight tweaks uh, but if you don't have color books this is going to be a really quick way for you to get these Pantone colors especially with Adobe removing the Pantone swatch books uh, from their software. Um, I'll also say as well that Logo Package Swatch um, is uh, cheaper than buying the Pantone Connect extension so there's that as well. Um, and uh, yeah, my, you know, just to mention it now, a uh, logo package swatch uh, will be $25 uh, for the launch week uh, that I've already mentioned, you know, 5th, uh, 30th of October to the 5th of November 2023, uh, you will get a 20% discount. So, uh, so that's really, really good. Um, so that's copying, you know, that's using the color actions and going uh, copy all colors and then pasting in. What you can also do is you can go to color actions and choose make color sheet. So if I choose make color sheet, it's gonna bring up a window, uh, I'm on PC, and ask me where I want to save that. So I'm gonna save that to my desktop. And then you'll see here in logo package swatch that it tells me that it exported. Uh, so what I can do is I can go to my um, PDF file, zoom out a bit. And you can see here that it's brought in the color swatches and it's uh, got the names that it automatically named them and we've got our references so you've got a pdf that you can you know that you have to file you could send that off to your client if you want um, but generally i will you know take those numbers because i like to format um, everything the way that i like to to have everything um, so if we go back to uh, illustrator So now that I've got these, you know, got these numbers here, you know, as I say, I can, you know, I could open up the, the PDF. Uh, well, let's just uh, do that. Okay, so there's the PDF opened up in Illustrator. So, you know, I can copy everything. So I could copy everything across. Um, so you can see I use circles, um, but if I didn't, you know, didn't have that there and I didn't have any of this here, let's just move these out of the way. I could just open that PDF and just copy and paste all of the colors in. Um, and they're there, you know, it's all done. I mean, I could 
I could remove these names here if I don't want, you know, these names. But sometimes having these names is good for you when you're talking with your client because the client's not going to remember the Pantones. They're not going to remember CMYK references. And so having, you know, uh, names that are, you know, more memorable. So you say, you know, you're talking about, oh, we, we use the wild sand color here in conjunction with wild strawberry. Then they know which colors you're talking about. So it can be useful. So you can keep them if you want um, or you can remove them. Um, doing this allows you to kind of, you know, set up your page whichever way you want, which however, you know, however you want to style it, uh, then you can do that. There are things as well that, you know, like I say, this is such a time saver. Uh, every little bit of time that we can save is great because, you know, time is money. And if we can do things more quickly um, and reliably, then it's it's all good. And so that's why I was really excited about um, Logo Package Swatch coming out. It's another tool that I can use to simplify my processes and make things um just get done more quickly. Um, so there are some things that uh, that you need to be aware of, um, and those are that um, Logo Package Swatch can't get all the color information from the following. So objects with multiple appearances applied, patterns, gradient meshes, freeform gradients, symbol instances, CC library assets, that's creative um, cloud library assets, compound shapes, which is not the same as a compound path, uh, live paint, drop shadow effects, inner glow effects, and outer glow effects. What I did was I selected, when I wanted colors, I selected, you know, my colors here, but you could, if you were, if you had your logo in color, so the, the logo that I have here is actually black and white and it's supported by this color palette. But if you had a logo, so let's just take these here, you can select the logo with all of the colors in it and if we go to um, project actions and go to a new project and call this test two okay and i've got these logos these colors selected i can hit add selected colors um and actually it doesn't look like it's select the color from maybe it's because i've got that grouped let me ungroup that let's delete that it's a nice test here okay let me outline this text so let's outline the text. So let's now try it, add selected colors. Okay, so there you go. We've learned something there in that it won't add color from live text. So you'll need to outline, turn your text into outlines um, and it will bring that in. So there you go. You know, we're learning something um, as we go through here. So that's something else to be aware of is that you need to uh, turn your text to outlines if you're going to select your colors uh, from the logo and you still have live text in that logo. Um, I think I've already mentioned that you, if you've got a lot of colors, you could get the same uh, color name appearing uh, in the list several times, but you can go in and change those. And as we've also seen as well, you know that white or other very light colors may appear uh, with a what or with the the color value of out of gamut, and so you will have to manually do that. Um, and one final thing to say as well, as you can see, we output a PDF with the color swatches and the color values. If you import the swatches, the color blocks from the PDF into Illustrator, and then use the dropper on those swatches to get color references they may be different to what the color values are listed below the swatch. And the reason for that is that the PDF is rendered in the browser. And so it's using a different, you know, different profiles and lots of other different things. Don't worry about that. The color values that were originally created in Illustrator are correct from the color swatches you have in the document that you selected them from. So, you know, if you're using the PDF and you're bringing it into Illustrator, don't use the dropper to select colors from there. Always use the color values that are written or use, you know, use the dropper on colors from the original document that you created the swatches from. So that's my uh, review um, and, you know, quick tutorial of Logo Package Swatch. 
I'm loving it. It's 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 another little speed up to my uh, to my um, packaging process. Uh, one of the one of the things that did take me the longest sometimes was create. If you've got a lot of color swatches, you know it can take you you know it can take you a bit of time to do that. This is going to literally turn it into a couple of minutes from what potentially would be you know let's say thirty minutes. Uh, it's sometimes longer. Um, if you're specifying Pantones, that can be a lengthy process, you know, making sure you're in the right light and getting it all done. So having it specify Pantones is a real time saver as well. And the fact that you now have access to Pantone again inside Adobe Illustrator, which, you know, Adobe very graciously removed for us. So that's really, really good. Um, Check out my other uh, videos on the Logo Package um, Express. You know, if you've not heard of Logo Package Express, which you use to export um, your logo files uh, in all formats, sizes, um, and it organizes them into lovely folders, uh, which are all, you know, uh, saved into a, a really easy to access order. Please watch that video. I will leave a link in the description. I will also leave a link to another video where I uh, to a live stream that I did where I talk about and show my favorite color tools when I'm creating logos and how I specify and use those tools when I'm you know conceptualizing and choosing my color palettes. So please check those out. The, there is a link to buy Logo Package Swatch down in the description as well. And as I say, you will get a discount if you're watching this in the launch week. Otherwise, it's you know $25, which is nothing really. It's so cheap that it's just it's a no-brainer to go and buy it and have it sitting in Adobe Illustrator uh, for you to use as and when you need it. Okay, thanks for watching and stay creative, folks.